Um, so thank you everyone for attending uh, this joint webinar between Three Forge and Chronicle. Uh, my name is Andrew Twig and I'm Sales Director at Chronicle. I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to the panelists and outline the format of the webinar. So the first, firstly, let me introduce Robert Cook. Robert Cook is the founder and principal architect at Three Forge. Um, he founded in 2012, Robert's company is a New York-based provider of data visualization technology and has achieved significant growth over the years as a result of increasing demand for its award-winning web-based browser AMI platform. Today's AMI is deployed at three of the five largest global banks and nearly 20% of the US equities flow through the platform. 3Forge has provided its services to hedge funds, broker-dealers, and other financial services firms. And Robert is a senior information technologist concentrating on the unique challenges faced within the trading world. His accomplishments have spanned trade repository, electronic trading, reference data, middle office allocations, regulatory reporting, commission sharing, and trade analytics. He's also been hands-on from requirement gathering, development, quality assurance, and production support through building these various front-end and back-end products. Robert has concentrated on careful data modeling and development paradigms to achieve faster times to market by building and leveraging reusable components. Before starting 3Forge, Robert was a senior level position at Tier 1 Bank, JP Morgan, and Bear Stearns, and the Dark Pool Liquid Net. And the, the other panelist is Peter Laurie, CEO of Chronicle Software. Peter founded Chronicle in 2013 as he saw great demand for low latency Java within the electronic trading. During the past seven years, Peter's been pivotal in growing Chronicle Software to become a trusted partner to many global Tier 1 banks and hedge funds. In addition, Chronicle Open Software, Chronicle Open Source Software has downloaded over 17 million times per year and is used across multiple industries, ranging from payments, biometric research, and gaming. And the business has now grown to over $3 million per year turnover, with the revenue growth this year set to be over 30%. Prior to this, I had many consultancy positions for global financial institutions. He's a Java champion and one of the leading experts in Java development with the most answers on Stack Overflow. The format today is that there'll be a quick overview of Chronicle and how the data for the demonstration was produced, followed by Robert giving us more information on 3Forge and then a live demonstration of the AMI and its visualization of Chronicle Q. If you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them via the chat feature in Zoom and Peter and Robert will answer them at the end. I'll say over to you, Peter, but I've got a quite slight technical issue with my um, PowerPoint. So uh, there we go. Can you see that? Peter? Yes, we can. Okay. I can. Good, good, good. Yeah, so, um, so what we're looking to do is today is to see how we can visualize data that's been stored, uh, in this case, in a Chronicle queue. Um, uh, Chronicle Q is a foundation piece for a lot of our other uh, enterprise products, but it, it itself is uh, an Apache 2 licensed library. So um, we have many, many uh, clients using, well, many users uh, who are just using the open source version. So we go next. Yeah, so um, Q Enterprise um, is an addition on top of Q, and uh, it's intended for things like replication, um, high availability, and uh, failover between uh, systems. So th this is a fairly common combination for um, our enterprise clients, and it also enables um, failover and replication of fixed sessions for our fixed engine. So we go next. So in today's demo, we're modeling a, um, a system where there's a series of uh, microservices chained together. So every time um, the uh, message is written to the queue, a write timestamp is added, and every time it's read, uh, a, a read timestamp is added. Uh, in each case, it's a nanosecond timestamp, so it's high, high granularity. 
uh, sorry, high resolution. And, um, and for, for the purpose of this test, it's actually going through a series of microservices um, uh, so that you've got some interesting data to look at. And um, finally, um, a message comes out the end, which has, uh, in this case, 10 timestamps, 12, 12 timestamps. And then uh, we can take the deltas to see each stage, like how long did it spend in the queue before it was read? How long did it spend in the service before it was passed on to the next um, queue? Okay, next. Uh, so, so like I said, they go got a whole series of timestamps. Initially, we we started with just one OMS, but um, um, we added more to um, give you some more visualization data. So, if we now hand over to Robert to give us a bit more on AMI. Okay. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Um, so yes, today we're going to be doing a uh, live demo on our AMI platform. But before we do that, I wanted to give a quick background. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I do uh, believe that you know seeing is, is always more fun than just seeing some diagrams. Um, but basically, the AMI platform itself can be broken into a few uh, broad categories. It has a high-speed internal cache, um, which is really used so its data is streamed in. Um, it can be... Uh, it can go through a CEP engine, things like that. Um, then we have a very broad uh, connectivity layer, and we're very excited to be introducing Chronicle into the family of adapters we support. Um, and, I, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how I think this is such a unique uh, opportunity to work with such, um, such, type, such type of product in a little bit. Um, and then I think what most people probably know us for is the dashboard builder. So we have a very rich uh, uh, environment where you can drag and drop and create dashboards. And again, the, the combination between the connectivity and the high speed database is really what lets you uh, what, what lets you basically get the best of both worlds, right? Because when you're visualizing data, there's always a historical component to it. And in that case, you'd use our connectivity layer. And then there's also a real time component, in which case you'd use our high-speed uh, database cache. And both of these we will be talking about today. Um, on the bottom there, you can see we've got uh, some, some various types of examples of things we can talk to. So we can talk to existing uh, machine learning models. We can um, query from uh, flat files. We can talk to SQL databases, NoSQL databases. Uh, we can execute shell scripts and whatnot. Um, and then we also have a REST callback API as well. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. We, we've, we're kind of, uh, you know, Chronicle's a very, uh, I would say, unique solution to a very interesting problem. And so we are probably bucketing that into the uh, SQL category, so or to the database category for this demonstration. So really the goal of, of, of the adapter we built is to really make the Chronicle queue look and feel like a database uh, you can access. Um, so with that said, um, I'm going to jump over and start sharing my screen. Click that guy there. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Okay. So uh, first off, a quick example of what's going on here. So this is basically a dashboard that we've built inside uh, AMI. Um, the idea is it's connecting to lots of Chronicle queues, and I'm just going to show that workflow here for a second. So the idea is we have a producer, and that's going to be this little script I run where I hit the enter key. Um, that's going to send data into the client connectivity layer. The client connectivity there then sends um, that order over to the algo layer. And when I say sends, I mean it writes to the queue and the algo uh, layer reads it from the queue. Same thing to the SOR, same thing to the exchange layer, and then same thing to send it out the door. And this dotted line here, um, that, that would simulate sending it off to the exchange, right? So you've got the client level, exchange level, and then I would say a very traditional um, sort of uh, configuration, simple configuration here in the middle. Um, and the idea is we're tapping in for the real-time stuff, we're tapping in right here. So there's a, uh, a timestamp captured here, it travels through, um, each one's adding its own timestamp, and then we're basically displaying that there. So with that said, um, this is uh, this fancy screen here is where I can send in orders. So basically, by hitting the enter key, that sends in a new order. Um, if I type in a number, that's going to send in a larger set of orders. So let's say I type in a thousand. So now we've just streamed a thousand orders. Um, those thousand orders went through all of these systems are now being displayed inside here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh. And now you can get an idea of what these latencies look like. 
Um, so, so very quickly here, um, what we've got along the time here or along the bottom is really message sequence number. Um, and then uh, vertically, we've got those latencies. So basically, we're seeing the latency for the first top, which would be the client. Um, then we've got the uh, uh, ELGO layer and the SOR layer, and then we basically got the exchange layer. So this is the aggregate um, latency, right? So this is the order coming in, and that's the order going out. So that's the total latency here. And then basically, we're breaking it down hop by hop. Um, additionally, we're just giving you some aggregations on that data. So breaking, uh, rolling it up by account, we're giving a heat map, which is a similar concept, rolling it up by uh, account and, and algorithm. Um, and then really the, uh, the, the money uh, screenshot is down here with this table. Basically, we've got the 1000 order sitting inside here. We've got an originating timestamp. Um, then we've got the client's timestamp, algo timestamp, SOR timestamp, and then the exchange timestamp. Uh, and basically now as you move across, um, you can basically see that total uh, latency as well. Um, now, going across, then we've got that, uh, that historical information. Um, or I'm sorry, just the, the payload as well, like the account and order ID, things like that. Um, and then this guy here is basically giving you a latency chart. So for each one of those hops, you can see now it's obviously very consistent because I sent in a thousand. So we can basically see what that looks like. Um, let's go ahead and just start sending in a few more orders. So again, on this, I'm going to move it to another screen here. But basically, as I hit enter, um, we can see now these orders are coming in and the latencies are starting to look a little bit better as I send these in. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and send in 10,000. So I'm going to send in 10,000 records. Um, so now you could, uh, and, and Chronicle could take yeah, I'm sure uh, for people that use Chronicle know this, that's basically warmed up the JVM, gotten the hotspot going. And now um, as I start sending in those numbers, uh, basically we're getting a better latency, right? And so this is basically what it looks like as it's traveled through um, all of these systems. So in this case, it's 164 uh, micros across. Um, so that's one example. I'll go ahead and just refresh this guy so we can see what's been going on. And I'm going to say show everything. So refresh. Um, so this is, yeah, this was us sending it in before. This is us sending it in now. And now we can see it's very, very small. Um, I'll just go ahead and zoom in on the end here. And now we can see that the latencies have really dropped down as we're sending in these, in these later orders. Um, so that's um, one interesting way to look at the data here. Um, another thing uh, we put together was a histogram. So let me go ahead uh, first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send in uh, around 1,000 orders here. Um, and the idea, so I'm just going to hold down enter. Um, we're now sending in orders at the tightmatic rate, which is about 30 keys, you know, something like that per second. So basically, the idea is I'm going to send in around 1,000 orders um, at a nice slow pace. So this is a very sunny day scenario where now we're getting, um, we're not getting the queues backing up, so on and so forth. And of course, you can see the dashboard is updating in real time as those records are coming through. And really, what I'm paying attention to is this this number up here. Um, I'm waiting for that to get a little above 12,000. Then I know I've sent in around um, 1,000 orders. Okay. So let's assume now I sent in 1,000 orders. Okay. Now, if I were to hit refresh, um, now we can see those numbers are looking great. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, let's just view the last thousand. So now we can start to get some more meaningful information here. I'm going to start to zoom in on those latencies. Um, Right, we ended up with a few little spikes there that caused some issues, but generally now we can see the the, um, the latencies here are nice and nice and low. Um, and again, this for me isn't necessarily to talk about the exact latencies of this simple lab machine that we've set up and and, and spent a few hours configuring. It's more about saying that imagine in your production environment or in your UAT environment, you now have accuracy, so you can sort of see this information. Um, as it's taking place. Um, another chart I put together was a histogram chart. So the idea is now we could say, let's say I just want to take all the records and I'm going to put them into a 10, uh, 10 microsecond bucket. So now we can see that right here in the beginning, we've got a lot of things sitting very uh, low. So that's good. Um, we've got a few spikes here in certain areas. So for some reason, there's, there's a handful that took uh, a longer period of time. And just to be clear, on the bottom here, we're doing microsecond latency, and then we're doing count here. So I've did a 10 second bucket or 10 microsecond bucket. Let's say we do a, uh, let's go ahead and do a one millisecond bucket. And now we can see that definitely the dominant one here is, is in the, is in the near zero range, right? But I don't want to look at all the records. I'm going to go ahead and say, I just want to look at those last thousand records. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to the one microsecond range. 
Um, and I should point out that this is looking at the latency across all five systems. So basically, I'm saying take the start time from the incoming, that's right there, and use the end time from the exchange, that's right there. And basically, we can see, I would say these are uh, 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 pretty healthy numbers here. So we're seeing you know, around, let's say, the sweet spot is maybe 39 micros, um, and that's kind of the, 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 the max. Uh, count and then we've got a few up here where it's a little bit slower. Um, but again, you know, as I start to narrow in the system, so right now I'm doing incoming to exchange, but let's say I said incoming to client, right? So now this is basically just a hop between one individual system, and now we can see those numbers are even better. So basically, you can go ahead and choose um, any any system you want, and you can see what those latencies look look like between them. Um, again, this isn't some preset dashboard that that uh, that this is the limits of it. This just I thought, and 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 my colleagues that helped. Uh, come up with this dashboard. We just thought these might be interesting ways to start to look at the latencies and to look at something like this. Um, so to recap, uh, what is happening so far is, again, we've got an order coming in. It's, going, it's traveling through these systems. And then we've connected AMI. We've basically tapped in to this area here. And then as that message comes across, we can see that whole latency. But now let's say we want to actually query the queue. So that first part, what I've been talking about, this is really, I would say, the real-time streaming aspect of it. Um, and so just to give an idea, I'm going to send in a little bit more data. So instead of a 10,000, 1,000, 10,000, let's go ahead and send in 100,000 records. Um, so now we've got 100,000 in there. Um, let's go send in another 100,000. So now we've got around uh, uh, maybe a little less than a quarter million, 200,000 records sitting inside there. Um, uh, and I'm doing this so that I can show how fast the querying is um, of, of the system as well. So just to give an idea, again, I, I think it's fun to look at this. I, I forgot to show this before. Um, I'll go ahead and say just show all the data. Um, and let's do that one microsecond. Um, I'll hit refresh. Um, I guess I shouldn't do all because we've got that beginning. That's the last 100,000. Yeah, there we go. So, so you start to get interesting charts when you have these larger volumes of data that you can look at. Um, so with that said, um, now the idea is I want to go and query the queue, right? So again, something I think that's, that's re remarkable about putting Chronicle and the AMI platform together is if you think about what's happening is you've got a very, you've got, you know, arguably the fastest messaging system there is to move data between two microservices. And on top of that, you have an absolute truth as to what was sent out of one system and what was sent into another system. And I think anyone who's using this product or considering using uh, Chronicle knows that. And that's a very, very valuable thing. And really, I think where we come in is we now say it's very easy to diagnose and look at that. So for example, now, let's say I come in and I say, I see this particular order. And for whatever reason, I think this particular order looks interesting. I say show audit trail. So what this is doing now is it's basically running a queue, a query across all of the different queues. So we found the order in the first queue, which is incoming to client. We found it in the second queue. We found it in the third queue, fourth queue, fifth queue. And then basically, we used our data model, or which I'll talk about in a little bit, to basically stitch all this together. So now you can go through, you can see you know, those timestamps, that original timestamps getting carried through, and then each additional system is adding a new timestamp, right? So this basically gives you that audit trail. And this audit trail is, is being done by actually going and, and querying that queue. So, you know, there isn't a lot of heavy lifting or moving files around or having to consolidate everything in one place. And I'll talk about how that architecture is set up in a little bit. Um, of course, we could go ahead and say maybe we want to query multiple orders. So go ahead and highlight and I'll just go say show the audit trail. So now it's going to run the query. Again, if you think about this, it's it's 200,000 messages in each queue. I know that's not a huge number, but and it's also doing it across five different queues and it brought that up uh, uh, fairly quickly. Um, so I'll go ahead and sort that by order ID. And again, now we can see the audit trail on a per order basis. Okay, so the next thing I want to do now is give you an idea of what it would look like 
to go and add something to this dashboard. And again, uh, you know, it takes quite a while to really go through and cover all the facets of AMI, um, certainly beyond what we could do here. But I thought this would at least give you a, a, a sampling of the sorts of things you could do. So right now, we're in what I would call end user mode. So the idea is a, a user comes in, they use the dashboard, perhaps to do a webinar similar to like I did today, um, now to, to you know, diagnose their, their environment. Uh, but then um, I have access to this green button. So now this puts me in a configuration mode where I can start to build things out here. So you'll notice all the panels and all the different widgets have these little green buttons. This is where we can kind of control the different facets of it. But what I'm going to do now is go and I'm going to create a new window. And what I want to do is set it up so that if I click on an order, maybe I just want to find all the incoming data for a particular client. So I'm going to build something that queries a queue and brings in that data. So I'm going to click on this and say, create table visualization. Um, this is our data modeler. I'm going to spend just a second talking about this. Let me move these guys out of the way here. Um, there we go. So the data modeler is set up. So these blue guys are your underlying data sources. The green guys are where you do the calculations. And the red guys are your visualizations. And then you have these arrows here, which are actually dictating workflows. So for example, when we choose something in a panel, and that ends up filtering out showing the last 10,000 records, that's represented by that line there. So again, this really gives you a, a document view architecture. Um, now, going back, to add a Chronicle queue is very simple. Choose attach data source. Uh, you know, Chronicle uh, was smart enough to use a, a very low uh, alphabetical letter, so they get to show up second in the list. Uh, Chronicle queue. And then you basically fill in the parameters, and then you can choose the relay to run on. And I'm going to talk about that in a second, because that's how we basically can remotely access queues. Um, so you give the name, the URL is basically the path of where the queue exists, so on and so forth. So um, I already have a queue here. This, this represents um, the, the demo we're doing today. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this guy. Um, now I can choose which table I want. So I could choose you know, multiple tables. In this case, I just want to choose that client table. Next. Um, really, our system, what it's doing is it's coercing a, quer a SQL query into a Chronicle query. So I'm going to go ahead, just run a quick test there. And now I'm going to create a table, finish. And, and I know for viewers unfamiliar with AMI, I'm, I'm moving quickly on this. But again, we only have a limited set of time here. So now, um, basically, we're bringing in just a snapshot. I've set it for the first 10,000. But now I'm going to go add a relationship. So I'm going to say I want to add a relationship between this data here and that table I just created. And what I'm going to say is I want to link this on account. So the account of the incoming system should match the target of the query of the, of the uh, table I want to view. So then I'm linking that on account. And I'm going to say um, only when user right clicks from a menu. And I'm going to say show account details. And I'm going to say update relationship. So now we can see we've got a new green line there. That's a new relationship. So I'm, I'm off doing my normal business. And now I come in here and I say, I want to see all the information for Jacob Clark. It goes and runs that. It ran that query against the queue and brought that in. I left that 10,000 limit in there. Let me turn that off. Edit underlying data model. Turn off that limit. Finish. And let me run that again. So I'm going to go right click, show account details. And now it brought in all 19,000 records for uh, Jonas Smith. And again, you know, if I went and I were just to send in another 100,000 records, there we go. And now I were to right click and say, show account details for Jonas Smith. Now it's going to bring in a larger number, right? It brought in 29,000. Um, you could obviously do more fancy things like um, visualizations and, and charts and stuff like that. But this gives you an idea of the sorts of flexibility with a tool like this. Um, so with that said, I'm just going to talk for a second about um, the... Uh, let's see where I have that. So, let, there we go. So I'm just going to talk about the architecture here for a little bit of how you would do... Um, how in the real world, you could access Chronicle queues. So I think naturally the way the, 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 the landscape is evolving is you have microservices. Um, so, and then you take all your different sorts of um, needs and you create microservices out of them. All the different applications, you create microservices, and then you try to align them onto a simple machine. 
Um, you know, historically, the idea is you put algo boxes on one machine, SORs on another machine. Now, I think we're flipping to a paradigm where it's you put all the algo, SOR, everything on one machine. Those are microservices. And then you use Chronicle queues to connect those. Uh, and then you can basically set up multiple hosts, and that's where you get your parallelization. So maybe this machine would be doing symbols A through F. You know, this one's doing G through Q, and this is doing R through Z, something like that. Um, and now the question is, you've got these chronicle, you've got these queues flying all over the place, and how do you access them in a cohesive manner? Um, so basically, you could set up a relay on each one of these machines. Those relays are then actually interacting directly with that queue, and then they're using a TCP IP connection to then interact with our platform. Um, so now you can imagine that um, in, in a scenario where you need to do analytics or you need to do some sort of diagnosis um, uh, across a large set of machines, this gives you a very easy way to access that. Um, so with that said, I thought this was a, a reasonable introduction. And again, for those that are unfamiliar for AMI, I know a little, I, I moved a little quickly there, but, um, I did want to leave uh, plenty of time, uh, for questions because I figured there would be some. Um, so I, I suppose we can move over to that, uh, Andrew. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Robert. That was good. Um, yeah. First question is, is on the GUI actually, can you view summary percentile data on the GUI? Excuse me. Just the last word. Uh, the the interface, the AMI. Sorry, the AMI. Can you view summary percent percentile data on the AMI? Semi percentile. Summary. S U M M A R Y. Oh, yes. Sorry yes. for my northern accent. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Absolutely, you can. So you know, I, I really should talk about the. Uh, on my screen is still being shared. Yep. So I'm going to talk about the data model just for a second here. Um, so this is really where you can start to build out these um, these analytics. So if I go in and we look at the. Um, uh, let's say the data model are for this particular guy, and I say edit underlying data model. Um, this is where the analytics live. So you can set up any sort of grouping or any sort of distribution um, you'd like. Um, we also have something uh, called a nearest join, where let's say you wanted to take an event and you wanted to find the event that's nearest that event. Um, so we have a lot of tools around that stuff. Um, obviously, um, I think I think the, the question is a leading question. I think that's a, a good way to look at data. Uh, and I'm sorry we don't have it in this demo, but absolutely it can be done. Excellent. Uh, and one for you and Peter, I think. What, what do you see as the roadmap for uh, Chronicle and 3Forge? A bright, a bright roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yes. Yeah. I, I, um, so Chronicle Qs uh, have been used by um, both clients and a lot of users on the internet. And we can see that there's a lot of opportunity to extract information and value out of the data that perhaps is not being tapped yet. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think the, um, from a, a roadmap perspective, another thing we're interested in is, is AMI does have the ability to push data. Um, so that's something I think we could introduce to our adapter, would, which would be the ability to, you know, when a user takes an action, let's say they say right click, cancel an order, um, it could push a message onto a, a queue. And so, you know, it, this, I, I I guess the way I look at it is in a, in a low latency enterprise environment, um, you know, Chronicle could be our interface to these to these applications, not just from a reading perspective, but from a, a writing perspective as well. Okay. Um, another question is: if you, if you write data to the queue in a binary form, would that be an issue for the AMI? Um, Yes, we talked about this. Uh, I, I'm not saying yes, it would be a problem. Yes, we, we uh, have, have addressed this. We, uh, so here's what it would come down to. If you're going to use a binary protocol, if it's your own, then you're going to get back a blob. I mean, basically, you know, so, so to be very clear, um, if I go and I say, uh, let's say, um, I'm in this guy now, and I said, window, new window, um, create table visualization, and I went and just chose um, one of these guys, we're seeing nice clean data. Let's say that was binary data. You're basically going to see a blob object here. You could drill in and see the individual bytes. So the idea is that you would um, uh, have to incorporate your marshalling into the adapter. So your marshalling code would have to be introduced into the Java adapter, and that would have to somehow coerce 
course, that uh, binary blob, that, that binary object into um, our table format. Okay. Um, and one on hardware. What, what kind of hardware does the AMI need? Well, we've, well, we've done tests on like a, a, a Raspberry Pi and it runs fine on that. Um, and then, and then on up, depending on, you know, how much data you want to store in it and how many users you want to have simultaneously working on it and how much, uh, data you're going to be streaming in. Um, so the general, uh, rule I like to use as, as a benchmark is for every million orders. And I kind of, we have a definition of what we consider an order, but let's call it about a hundred fields of varying variety uh, of types. Um, we really say it's about one gig per uh, million orders that you want to store in memory. Um, so that's for the streaming component of it, right? So you're streaming orders in. Um, and then on the flip side, for the static queries, um, really the hardware is very minimal. It's just it has to be able to store the result from that query. Um, and so I think, I think similar to Q, the, or it's, it's a Chronicle Q, I think the hardware performance would be, or the hardware requirements would be very low for the static querying portion of it. Okay. Um, can the AMI platform, i.e. AMI Center, be distributed? Um, I would, if, if the question, the answer is yes. Um, but I, the, the thing is, there's a lot of different dimensions, I think, for how we could say distributed. So I'll take my best guess. But if, if the uh, questioner wants to clarify, I'm happy to um, clarify as well. Um, so you can create dashboards. Um, you can set up multiple AMI uh, web servers. So going back to that diagram, which I think is still in my background, maybe not. Oh, it was right there. Right. So in the platform itself, you can set up any number of web servers and each one of those web servers can you know, host lots of users. Um, this dashboard I've created here, um, I can take that dashboard. Um, I can take any individual component if I want. So for example, I could say, maybe I want to take this particular dashboard and distribute it to someone. I can basically, this is the code for that dashboard for that panel. Or I could likewise say, I want to maybe distribute the entire dashboard. I could do this and distribute it. Or I could say file, publish to cloud, uh, save to cloud, sorry. And then at that point, um, now it's saved um, in a local repository where other people can load that dashboard. So I don't know if that addressed the question because there's other ways I think it could be interpreted, but. Okay, uh, just say there's a follow up. Single web server layout across multiple AMI centers. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, you can do that um, for, uh, I would say, the static query portion of it. Um, and in terms of the AMI roadmap, it's on the AMI roadmap to allow for real-time streaming. So without getting too much into the weeds on the architecture here, really, you can think of AMI as almost two products in one. It has the static querying, and then it has the real-time streaming, right? And, and that's where it's such a good fit with Chronicle, because... We can statically query the queue and we can push data in real time. Um, now, when you build dashboards, likewise, there's static dashboards and real time dashboards. The real time dashboards need to sit on one center, but the static dashboards can sit and they can be distributed across any number of centers. So I know that's a, maybe a more complicated answer, um, but we are looking on the roadmap um, it, uh, very shortly to have the ability for a single web server to connect to any number of, of centers. Um, for real-time streaming as well. Okay. Um, does 3Forge have the ability or ambition to produce 3D surface renderings? Oh, we have that. I forgot to show it. Yes, we have 3D surface renderings. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost daring to just go and, and create one right now. <laughs> but yes, we, we absolutely have 3D surfaces. Um, it would, yeah, we do. I didn't think to put it in here though. Okay. Um, well, maybe we've got a little time because we've got no more questions at the moment. I don't know if anybody else has got any questions. Okay. Any other final thoughts from yourself, Robert and Peter, on, on the work that we've been done so far and plans for the future? Um, 
Yeah, I'll 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 uh, talk for a minute here, and then I'll, I'll let Peter wrap up. Um, well, I think that uh, it's it's been an interesting experience um, adding this Chronicle Q. I think you know three fours we're we're very proud of always looking and trying to find the newest and fastest technologies and the, and the newest and fastest ways that people are doing things, and you know work with them as partners. And I think in this case, uh, I think Chronicle is is. Um, exemplary of that. I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly a very fast product. Um, just doing these cursory tests, um, you, know, uh, you know, really, it took us a few hours to get the whole thing set up. Um, and then following that, we built the dashboard in a few hours. And, and following that, we're, you know, we're, we're seeing very interesting stuff from, from Chronicle. And I think that there is um, a lot more room to do further integration. And we're seeing more and more of our customers um, adopting Chronicle, so it's only logical that we want to, um, you know, pursue pursue this path. So we're, you know, and 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 I should mention um, our roadmap. While we find things that are interesting, and I, I personally find this a very interesting topic, um, our roadmap is is largely directed by our customers and what our customers are doing. And we see our cross customers using Chronicle, so that drives you know that drives our path, that drives our roadmap. Um, so, I guess what I would say to those out there that are interested in using um, a dashboard like this, um, you know, we're definitely keen on on. on hearing what people would like to see from the product. You know, we have a lot in there. Um, it's, we've been building it for years. We're always looking for, you know, recommendations on how we can improve things. So. And from a Chronicle, pers and from a Chronicle perspective, we're, um, we've, uh, we've got interest in uh, providing more integration to different protocols. Um, we've got some fairly lightweight JDBC stuff, but we're looking to beef that up. Um, web sockets, we have some a couple of existing solutions already, but we're looking to add um, other gateways um, to feed data in and out of um, queues without having to do it yourself. Well, I'm glad you're still on, Peter. There's a question that's just come in. What is the minimum version of Chronicle? Does AMI support? So what's the minimum version? Um, uh, is, it, is the question version 3 versus version 5? I think it's possibly. Maybe, yeah, probably. I think this is, yeah, that's probably it. Uh, at the moment, um, we've, we've only set it up for version 5, but um, I don't see that there would be a problem uh, integrating it with version 3 um, if there was a need. Yeah, I, I would second that, yeah. I, I don't... Well, you, you know Chronicle 3, I don't know Chronicle 3, but if it's similar to 5, I don't see it as being a big deal to adopt to that if, if there was a use case calling for it. It, it. it would be a different adapter, but it would be sure. about the same amount of work again. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, I think that's about it. Well, thank, thank you for uh, Robert and Peter for their contribution. Um, this is, the webinar has been recorded and um, it'll be available on our, our the Chronicle Performance Engineers site, and obviously Three Forge will make it available through their channels. Uh, and yeah, and we'll we'll send an email to everybody when it's available. So uh, once again, thank you, Robert and Peter. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thanks, Bye. Andrew. Cheers, Bye. Bye.